Welcome to BIV Today, the podcast from the newsroom of Business in Vancouver. I'm Kurt LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. You know, one-seventh of our province is parkland. It's some of the most biodiverse parts of the planet, popular as anything with us for visits, and uh, but it's also profoundly frail if we're really not careful in the time ahead. BC Parks Foundation was established in 2018, and it's set about to protect more of the province as part of a national goal that we have to make one quarter of our territory insulated from development, preserved, conserved. Uh, today though, the largest conservationist donation in Canadian history was announced. Chip and Summer Wilson are no strangers to philanthropy, but this is a new chapter in their benevolence. A hundred million dollar donation aimed at gaining matching funds from governments, from philanthropists uh, and individuals. And it's immediately gonna help three parcels of land with many more to come. My guest uh, needs very little introduction, Chip Wilson. Uh, is is with me now. He's holding a handheld device at the gym as we do this, and that's uh, that's great. We'll take that for you. Um, good to see you. Hi, Kirk. Yeah, hi, Kirk. Thanks for having me. Yeah, look, uh, you, you know, you could choose to help almost anything in the world if you wished, and maybe you are going to go about many more things. But what, what is what is it about you, Chip, in this case here, that determined this particular focus? Well, we spent a long time uh, in Ethiopia working on, you know, bringing schools to Ethiopia, building leaders. Um, and we, we probably put about $15 million into that. We found that the governance of working our, across the world in a place with wars, locusts, famines, et cetera, was we were actually spending more time on governance than we were, than if I just took that time and and spent more time in my business, I could have made the money and given them twice as much. Mm -hmm. So then we started really looking at, well, and my friend Joe Siegel said, Chip, do you want to be a small fish in a big pond or a big fish in a small pond? And that was, and I kind of like thought about that for a while, but so I kind of put those two things together. My, my wife and I, you know, also put our passion together, which was something that comes from all our businesses and that we provide components for people who live longer, healthier, more fun lives. We yeah. love movement. We love BC. We love the parks. So we, um, so we look at all those things and we went, we can take our money. We can give it to an incredible organization, the BC Parks Foundation with stunning governance and a great vision. And, and then we don't have to do the governance. And yet, are they, what we're, the money we're giving will last forever. And yeah. we are so thankful for the people before us that gave parks like Stanley Park, et cetera, which we enjoy every day. And we just can't imagine, we, we can just see a future where, man, the whole, this province can 25% of it could be parks. It's, uh, is this what they call long termism? Is that what it is? You're a long termist? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think I'm a proactive person, and I think, um, um, uh, you know, I'm not a crisis. I don't put money into crises. I think mm -hmm. that this is, um, yeah, it's, what, what can I say about it? It, it? It's for, like, I think of the Sioux Indians that have seven, that think about seven generations down. And so we, we think all the way that way a lot in our businesses, and we go, like, what's what's the best decision for I mean, two, three hundred years from now, and so mm -hmm. this is just the best decision we could have made. Yeah, but what's your assessment, Chip, of the threat right now to our parkland in this province? Well, of course, it's 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 you've got to understand that around the world, like we're one of the maybe three or four places in the world that's virtually untouched, and mostly because BC is so rugged and so little of it is inhabitable. And we're the last place on earth that really gets civilization, probably here in Northwest Australia. So to see the forest through the trees, or most people can't, like, like this is really, really special. And if we can get a hold of this and do something and buy this land now at a relatively inexpensive price for something that's going to last forever, it's going to be the deal of the century. Yeah, yeah. You... you you pledge this amount, uh, you know, in order to lever a lot of other donations too. And I wanted to see if you can foresee how that momentum is going to be built now. You've, you've given that large base of money. 
but obviously there's a lot more required in order to get to that goal. How do you see the momentum being built here over the next number of years? Well, I can only see what attracted us to it, to us. About three, four years ago, we opened up the newspaper and there was a, we did a big article about the Princess Louisa Inlet and trying to buy the south part of that and looking for matching donations. We immediately called up, tried to give our money away, and they were already full. So we really got where matching donations work. And of course, we're so thrilled to give 100 million, but if that can turn into 200 million because of every, every student, person, pensioner, whatever, giving $5, we can raise another 100 million. And I think the BC Parks Trust can get to, you know, that 25% of BC Parks by 2025. Yeah. It, you know, the intersection of this issue of parkland with climate change is really, it, is I think uh, pretty well understood, but uh, tell me a little bit about the intersection with reconciliation and, and what are your ambitions about this gesture, this donation that go toward that, do you think? Well, I'm not, I don't know so much about the reconciliation. I do know it's just good business. And if we can buy the lands uh, or buy the, the licenses for forestry and mining back from the government and the First Nations can come up and want, and, and want to steward the land, then I think that that's going to be a win-win for everybody. In other words, yes, they may do some you know, uh, forestry trimming. Yes, they may do some, um, uh, you know, put some hotels and things, they infrastructure that infrastructure that's required for them to, um, how can I say, um, uh, run a tourism business for the parks, then it's a revenue in generation for them. And we and the world basically gets them a park forever. Yeah. It, it, uh, when, you, when you start talking about things like hotels and other types of things to, to deal with tourism so that you know, people actually can stay where they where they're visiting. Um, how how worried do you ever get when you're you know you're kind of colliding uh, development with nature in that way? What what are your own guidelines or what kind of discussions are you already having about what what that needs to be here in the time ahead? Well, we were very careful about it because we didn't want to give our money away and then and then have a park be developed. I mean, we didn't want to see this some places that we've seen in the U.S. You know, I'm originally from Calgary, so I see how a place like Canmore just outside of the park has developed. Uh, a place like Banff just inside of the park has developed. You know, the government in the, um, and the Parks Department is very clear about what development can occur, what can't occur. And, it, um, and that's just, I, I think that's what we're... I'm going to say that's what we were hoping for, giving it to them, and what we've been promised back. Yeah, good. It, what stands in the way, do you think, of getting to this 25% figure? Um, well, part of the reason that we put 100 million up is because the BC Parks Foundation would try to negotiate on a piece of land, and then, and then, and then they negotiate for a price, and they go, "Now we have to go find the money." And no. sometimes the deal would fall through by no. putting the hundred million up and possibly with 200 million with the matching, then the BC Parks Foundation has the ability to negotiate and move quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a, it's a hairy audacious goal, 25% mm -hmm. of the province by 2025, but we're, we've seen it happen before when, when a big thing like uh, announcement like this happens, and people get behind it. And again, it's amazing what five and ten dollars coming in from a lot of people will do around the world. Yeah, yes, but there's also a, a lot of high net worth people in our province, as you know well. And and in not in many cases they've directed funds to things like healthcare. I mean, you you of course have done the same, yeah. uh, or to the arts or whatever. How how do you how do you sell this as the you know, one of the best uses of your philanthropy to other philanthropists, do you think? Well, we looked around and again, we've, we've gone through all of that. And, you know, you know, I gave a hundred million to Muskman District a couple of months ago. 
Um, the, the fact of the matter is with the BC Parks Foundation, this is forever. I mean, again, I look at Stanley Park 140 years ago, the vision that somebody had putting a park in the middle of a park 140 years ago, Vancouver was a park. And yeah. then, you know, people are going, well, you're crazy for doing that. But if you kind of go out another 140 years, even as buying hundreds of thousands of acres in North BC is going to be it's going to be substantial and there's going to be people around who are going to want to see in the final beauty of the world. Okay, so I think I know the answer to this one here, but I'll ask you as well. What's your favorite park? Um, I have to say the West Coast Trail. Um, huh. I've done it twice. Um, I find it spectacular. And Okay, so yes, yes, there's the grouse grind, which I love, and I do about 100 times a year, and and then they're all tied, of course, on third place is Stanley Park because I just think it's the most beautiful inner city park in the world. Yeah. And and what do you think is the park all of us should visit? Um, I'm going to say uh, the, the snowshoe trails north of Whistler in the middle of wintertime. Really? Yeah. Wow. I love them. It, it's It's quiet. It's that snow's thick. It's, um, it's uh, I, I don't know, I just feel like it's, uh, it, it brings me a lot of love in the middle of the winter time when I don't want to go up the mountain. Okay, yeah, that, that can be it. Uh, last question. Can, what's the best idea you had when you were in a park? Ah, uh, well, I'm going to say, like, coming to the realization that I was not going to be able to change Lou Lemon in the way, in, the, in what I had set out to do. So knowing, again, that my vision is to create the points to have people live a longer, healthier, and more fun life, I think it's deciding to buy Ammer, which then owns Arcteryx and Wilson Sports, Atomic, Solomon, and Peak Performance. I think that, that was the most, create the most fun I've had in a long time. You did that in a park? You, you like, yeah. that was your epiphany happened there? Right. No well, kidding. I, well, I would say, it, you know, I can say that with a surety because, you know, when you do the grouse grind and it takes you maybe an hour to, you know, 45 minutes to drive over, an hour and a half to do, and 40 minutes to drive back, whatever, there's lots of thinking time. And I really use that as kind of a meditation, but, you know, being in the moment kind of adds a lot of clarity to life. and and where, you know, what I want to do and where I want to go and what I want to make a difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I do my thinking while running. Uh, yeah. And parts have been pretty integral to that, too. I mean, I think, what's the, uh, what's the old adage? Never trust a thought arrived at while sitting down, right? <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard that one, but I'll go with it. It sounds like it falls into my lexicon. Yeah, Chip, good to see you. Congratulations on this. I think we're all grateful for this, uh, for what this is going to do for the long term. And uh, you know, I think we will get people at uh, providing some funds in the short term to uh, to match up what you what you've done, what you and Summer have done. Uh, good to talk to you today. Go back to your workout. <laughs> well, you look great. Good for running. You look like you're in fantastic shape, Kirk. Good for you. Uh, uh, my hockey team would tell you quite the opposite as a goalie. Uh, <laughs> I'm not nearly as flexible as I used to be, my friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care then. Bye-bye. All right. Chip Wilson. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief at BIV. We'll see you again.